Hello and welcome. This is the fourth video in the series of videos detailing the use of Masterframe and Masterframe Pro. In this video, we're going to be taking a detailed look at the Add Member option within the Create menu. In this structure, you can see that we have some additional grid lines generated outside the extent of the existing structure. Within the grid lines editing area, we can see these grid lines, but when we close the grid line editing area, the grid lines reduce to the set of members that are currently shown on the screen. This is also true if we use a general filter in any part of the structure using our zoom filter window. The visible grid lines will reduce to the set of grid lines that are visible for the extents of the current structure. Although when we do go to the facility to add any new structure, all the grid lines outside of the current view are visible to assist you in the generation of new structure. If you do wish the grid lines outside the current view to be visible, then we go to the grid line viewing options which is accessible by going to the grid line icon on the lines field on the right hand side of the top toolbar. There we can say, draw grid lines outside current view. In the create menu, we're going to take a detailed look at the add new members. Specific facilities to add columns and add bracing are given. However, they are just quick methods of generating a generic type line member with predefined attributes. A member is the most general case of any type of beam column or bracing type member and is defined as a line element with a start and end point. In the generation of line members, it's extremely important to operate in a view which is most convenient. For example, if we do wish to create views or create new members at a particular level, then it's convenient to move to that level. For example, now I'm looking exclusively at the range of the structure at the plan at level one, and also the default snapping locations as we can see from the coordinate information at the bottom of the screen that we are indeed at level one and we may generate new members at the Y value of 3.5, which is the Y coordinate of the plan at level 1. Before defining the location of our new member, it's important to note that it will be created with the properties shown on the right-hand side of the screen. The generic steel section type can be chosen, a concrete rectangular beam, a timber type section, or any other type of member already in use in the model. For example, in this particular instance, we only have two different types of steel sections in use in our structure and we can copy the use of one of those when creating new members. We'll just move back to the generic steel type sections. In the creation of the member, the cross-section rotation and various member attributes can be defined. We can also specify any viewing group or design groups that we want our new member to be a part of. Any of this information, for example, the member section property, the member attributes, or the group information, can be changed at a later stage. When defining a new member, we simply click on the start and end point to generate the new member. New members should be drawn as their physical entities between the start and the end points of the members. At this moment, it's worth pausing to consider the points at which new members can be generated. These are termed snap points. A variety of rich snap points are provided in 3D space around points of existing structure and other points where structure intersects in 3D space. The nature of the snap points can be controlled using the snap settings at the bottom right-hand corner of the frame window. One of the types of snap points we have is on what we class A, Generic Snap Grid. Here we can see the Snap Grid is turned on. We can turn the Snap Grid off using the settings, or we can turn the Snap Grid on and off using the quick setting on the bottom toolbar. The Snap Grid provides points on a plane defined at a regular grid spacing at any point in space. It's worthwhile noting the coordinate that you're receiving at the point that you snap on, because we can clearly see that this snap point is at the Y coordinate of 3.5. The Snap Grid is provided on the XZ plane by default but this can be changed using the variety of planes available, including a custom plane at any point, at any angle in 3D space. The snap grid spacing is currently set at a spacing of 0.25 meters. The resolution of the snap grid that's drawn gets improved as we zoom down further into the snap grid. The snap settings will still remain at those specified in the grid spacing snap settings. The snap grid allows you to define new structure outside of existing structure very easily. The origin of the snap grid can also be set using the pick origin point within the snap grid settings. Currently, the snap grid is set at an origin of x of 0, y of 3.5 and z of 0, hence the facility to pick points at a y coordinate of 3.5. The elevation of the snap grid is controlled automatically as we move through frame views, so on a floor plan view the snap grid is automatically orientated at the y coordinate of 0 to suit the floor plan. The snap grid will generally follow the angle of view in which you're looking. So if we're looking at something on a front elevation, the snap grid will default to the XY plane. If we're looking at a side elevation, it will default to the XZ plane, as can be seen in the snap grid settings. 
As we go back to 3D orientation, we can see the snap grid is still orientated on the XZ plane. The snap grid will revert to one of the principal planes as we move to that view. Also, as we move through our frame views, the snap grid automatically follows the line or the grid of the grid line axis. The origin of the snap grid can be easily set using the pick origin point, or more conveniently, by holding the control key down, we can pick a point on the structure to set that as the origin of the snap grid. This then allows points to be referenced from that point and measured about a new origin. The snap grid can be orientated at any point using the custom plane, or indeed by rotating the current grid by a specified angle. So for example, rotating the snap grid by 30 degrees gives us a grid at an angle which may be convenient in certain applications. We can specify the generic grid using three angles, or by picking three existing points in space, which will allow the snap grid to be orientated specifically to that plane. Turning the snap grid off to improve the clarity of other types of snap points that we can select, we can see that we can also click on snap points along existing members. Those are a third points, midpoints, and also at incremental steps along the length of the member. These are controlled again using the snap settings. We can see we have midpoint, third points, and tracking along a member. Currently, the interval of tracking along member is 0.1 meters. If you reduce this to a smaller interval, we can see that we can track along members at a much smaller interval. In addition to tracking along members and selecting those points where any dimension line is shown, you can simply type in a value that will override the dimension to snap at a specific location. Snap points do have favoritism to midpoints and third points, so generic snap points where we're measuring at any point along a member will take second priority to our mid and third points. In this particular scenario, we have a third point at 3.779 meters. Hence, it makes it a little tricky to select a snap point exactly at 3.5 meters until we zoom in to get to a resolution high enough to select the 3.5 meters graphically. However, a more convenient way to select the 3.5 meters snap point is to simply start tracking along the member in the direction we want and type in 3.5 to specify a snap point on 3.5 meters. That defines the first end of the of the member connected to an existing member. Now we can track along and specify another member at any intersection with any other member or at any other point in space. Tracking lines are automatically provided along the principal axis of X, Y, and Z. We can orientate this floor plan view to a 3D view, and we can see that we can easily draw members in space in the vertical axis away from this view. As we move towards the member on the other side, we can see that we have the blue dot representing an orthogonal snap point and the green dot representing a perpendicular to snap point. Likewise, if we come from the member above, we see that we have a perpendicular from snap point and a perpendicular to snap point, as well as an orthogonal snap point. Let's draw in another member at any angle. Coming from this point, we can see that we have a green line showing a project from line on the member, and that allows us then to intersect at a green point on another member which represents the project from intersection point. We can also intersect on the perpendicular from and the orthogonal points. The project from is available on the second end of any member. And in all circumstances where we see a dimension, we can simply overtype the dimension with a specified value. The insertions of members can be quickly undone using the quick step-by-step -step undo and redo facilities on the top toolbar. If we now generate new structure, you can easily see that when clicking on the first end of a member, we automatically get tracking lines about the first end for selecting the second end of a member. However, in certain circumstances, we may wish to have tracking lines to generate the first end of a member. As we can see, we automatically get tracking lines along existing structure. However, tracking points and lines can also be provided at any point by simply hovering over a location to provide a temporary tracking point about which to select a new snap point. Multiple tracking points can be selected allowing the intersections of those lines to be quickly generated. The nature of a tracking line can be controlled using the track settings. Here we can see we get tracking points as a project from, orthogonal from, and also perpendicular to. This can be controlled in the track settings. So if we wish to have perpendicular to tracking lines turned off and extension tracking lines aka projected from tracking lines turned off, then we can do so. However, these are extremely useful and we recommend that you keep those turned on. New members can also be generated parallel to existing members. To do this, you need to ensure that the parallel to tracking line option is turned on. So for example, if we wish to generate a new member parallel to this member at a distance of two meters away from it, we can simply start tracking down this member, 
Then type 2 meters to specify the first point, and now if we hover over this member, we'll see a parallel tracking symbol appearing on the member. We'll notice that the parallel tracking symbol will only turn from red to green when it is actively being tracked. Parallel tracking is quite useful, but sometimes can lead to too many tracking points happening at one time, so often it's useful to turn this off. The coexistence of a multitude of tracking lines and tracking points in a busy frame can be a challenge when trying to select the particular tracking point that you want. And in circumstances like that, we do recommend that you consider turning off certain tracking options and snap options to allow you to select the tracking point that you really want. This can be done by visiting the track settings, but also quickly by right-clicking and on the toolbar. Some of the key snap points are available to turn off and on directly. We can see that when generating the second end of a new member, that we get automatic tracking points away from existing members. Automatic tracking points detect nearby points and automatically create tracking lines from those nearby points. This can lead to a multitude of tracking points in 3D space, which can sometimes be undesirable, as it can create a very busy set of tracking points in a small space. Auto tracking can be turned off, which ensures that those track points aren't given by default automatically. Although by hovering over a member start or end point, auto tracking can be selectively turned on for specific members. Another extremely useful snap point generation facility is the polar tracking. We can turn on polar tracking quickly and easily using the toolbar with its settings determined within the snap settings options. With polar tracking on and with current settings of intervals of 30 degrees and custom angles of 45 degrees. Intervals can be set at the variety of preset intervals as well as a list of custom angles. So as well as 45 degrees here, we can have a further value that's 72.5. With polar tracking on and clicking on the second end of a member, we can see now we now have start points at the 30 degree increment, the 45 degree increment, the 60 degree increment, and the 72.5 degree increment. Again, we can simply type in a value of 8 meters to give us a member exactly at that length at the 30 degree track line. More generically, polar coordinates can be defined at the second end of a member using a text input. Clicking at the first end of a member and now typing 8 meters at 32.5 degrees gives us precisely an 8 meter long member at 32.5 degrees from the X axis. There are a variety of text inputs available to make generating members quick and easy. For example, clicking on the first end of a member, I can now say that I want the second end of the member at 3 meters in the X direction, 0 meters in the Y direction, and 2 meters in the Z direction giving us a point that's offset from the start point, which is 3 meters in the X direction and 2 meters in the Z direction. Let's just undo those last few members, and let's go back out to the full frame view. Snapping between points and the 3D orientation is of course entirely possible. However, when doing so, it's always worth keeping an eye on the actual coordinate being selected. For example, when looking at the full frame on a plan orientation, the program will always select the point on the frame closest to you. Let's draw in some new members in the horizontal direction and also in the vertical orientation so we have a new beam with some columns directly on the top. If we look at the full structure in a plan view, now we can see that if we are expecting to snap at a point from this point to this point, we may be expecting to connect two beams together at the top of plan at level 1. But we will actually be selecting two points at the tops of the columns because they're the ones that are closest to the user. So therefore, it's always more useful to operate in one of the default frame views when snapping in a 2D space. Alternatively, you can use the zoom filter to filter down into a part of the structure you want to work with. And in this instance, now we can see that the snap does occur at the Y coordinate of 3.5 and the beam goes in at the level that we were expecting it to. This concludes this video on the generic generation of new members in MasterFrame.